the email sequence that is set up, ready to go. So I just added them. Yeah, and so that first day, I booked four sessions, I believe. And then the rest kind of trickled in as more emails got sent out. Hey, boudoir photographers. Are you ready to be totally booked out with high paying clients? I'm Tracy Lynn and I went from side hustle photographer to running a million dollar boudoir photography business working just 30 hours a month. That's right. Just 30 hours a month on this podcast. I tell you how I did it and how you can too. Hey there, and welcome back to this episode of Sustainable Freedom with Boudoir Photography. I am very excited to introduce you to Kelsey of Rosewood Boudoir. She's in Knoxville, and she is amazing. I am super excited to bring her on. She had a huge, huge win recently booking one session from her email list, just randomly found her on her email list. And then another session, actually nine sessions, she booked at the Pink Bride Bridal Fair in Knoxville. So I wanted to come on, I wanted to bring her on and let her celebrate with us. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and introduce you to Kelsey. And I hope you enjoy this episode. Hey, Kelsey, I am so happy that you were able to join me today. Hello, Tracy. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, of course. So let's just go ahead and get started. How did you actually get your start in photography? How long have you been a photographer? How long have you owned your own business? So I went to school for accounting and I got my master's and I became a CPA. I was doing taxes all day, every day and working crazy hours. And about a year into that, I was like, this isn't going to work for me. So I had kind of started um, exploring some different career options and decided that photography was something I wanted to pursue. I've always had an interest. Like I have memories from I guess like preschool, there was a photographer studio next to my preschool. And I remember just being in awe of that. So um, I just kind of started diving in and learning everything I could. I had a camera. It wasn't an incredible camera, but I had one already. So I just started learning and I spent two, three years, two years learning before I even started charging people. That's awesome. It's awesome that you took the time to actually like learn before you started charging. I'm not even going to lie. I took like a month and then I was like, sure, I can charge people. <laughs> so. Well, I, that's not to say I was amazing when I started charging, but I was better than I was before. Right. <laughs> Right. I mean, I think everyone that listens to the podcast knows that I started charging like twenty five, fifty, hundred dollars. So I wasn't charging enough to say that I was charging, but still. Same. <laughs> exactly. Everyone has to start somewhere. And I love your story because like for me, I went to school for dental hygiene and I started I loved it for like a year and after a year I was like, I have got to figure out how to get out of this because I don't like watching my dentist go on all these trips while I don't have time to do that because I'm slaving away for him. So I totally yeah. feel you for the, for, yeah. Yeah. I really love that we kind of had that in common with the career that mm -hmm. we were just like, oh, wait, this isn't going to work for me. Better find something yeah. else. Exactly. After you spent so much time in college, because I have my bachelor's in dental hygiene and I spent like five years there at school and I was like, I cannot believe that I spent this long doing something that I end up hating. So when did you decide to try boudoir and then when did you actually add it to your business? Did you start with boudoir or were you working with um, other so I types of photography? Not, I did not start with boudoir. Sorry, I think you were breaking up a little bit on my end. Um, <laughs> I didn't okay. start with boudoir. I started just with everything as one does. Um, so I was doing really anything and everything from seniors to mm -hmm. um, newborn maternity family, really anything anyone mm -hmm. would pay me for. And right. since then I've niched down, but initially I dove into the education side of photography because I guess I'm a mm -hmm. nerd. I don't know. And so I decided yeah. that <laughs> I was going to learn from good educators. And one of mm -hmm. the first educators I stumbled across was Michael Sasser and he's a boudoir photographer mm -hmm. in California. And yep. I was very intrigued at that point by boudoir photography because I didn't realize 
that you could just specialize in something like that and you could make a good living mm -hmm. off like one form of photography like that. So I was also yeah. just, I really fell in love with his work and what he did and does and his mission. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I want to do that. And so I spent about a year yeah. too afraid to try. And then <laughs> maybe two years actually, because I may have found him before I even started charging for my other work. But um, in 2021, I decided that I was tired of making excuses. I had a spare bedroom, so I converted that to a studio space. Um, and I just started, it wasn't exactly a model call. I ran a Valentine's Day special for like 70 bucks. You get like a ton of images as one does again. And I had mm -hmm. maybe four people book. And that was when I just absolutely fell in love with it. And not yeah. that those images were incredible, but... It, it was a start and I For realized sure. how fun it was just to be one-on-one -on -one with mm -hmm. a woman and making her feel beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that was absolutely that's that's awesome. Yeah, I felt the same way. Like, honestly, the first boudoir session that I ever did, I didn't even know what boudoir was. So <laughs> I was like, okay, sure. You want photos in lingerie? That sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but the first session that I did, I fell in love with it too. It was like, I was like, oh, this is what I should have went to school for, not dental hygiene. <laughs> so how long did you try to grow your boudoir business before you decided to like seek help? So, so I had kind of always been on the education side. Um, mm -hmm. So I learned pretty early on from Michael Sasser how to set up like a profitable studio. Mm -hmm. But the piece that just really felt like it was missing was marketing. And so I was basically like, I had a good service. I knew what I was doing. I had something nice to offer, but I didn't know how to get my name out there or how to get people right. to book me. And um, at the same time, I was still working as a CPA, you've got to remember. And so I don't know how much you know about that, but during tax season, my photography business died every year <laughs> from January yep. to April. It was just, there's nothing for yeah. it. <laughs> there was no choice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, there was no uh, choice. It, you had to. <laughs> yeah, there's like, it, it was very frustrating because that was about five years. Mm -hmm. I was trying to do both and just struggling because mm -hmm. fourth of the year, I just couldn't do anything. Um, so yeah. I quit my um, accounting job this past October, and that was right around the time I found you. And I was like, okay, someone talking about marketing and strategy. And yes. so I... <laughs> just absolutely dove into your content. I think I watched, if not every episode, almost every episode of your podcast. I was on YouTube following you. Mm -hmm. I was on your stories, your Instagram. Like, I was basically Love your it. little stalker for a few months before I even reached Love out. It. <laughs> <laughs> but you had Love so that. much um, free information and that was really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of gave me some direction with marketing and I always wanted to do the pink bride, but it fell mm -hmm. during tax season every single year. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, so I knew that yeah. I could do it this year. So I had gone ahead and signed up. I think before I had bought any education from you, I was like, well, we're doing the thing. Mm -hmm. We're going to try. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I didn't have Jump in. a ton of strategy at that point um, until mm -hmm. I had kind of dove into a little bit more of what you talked about on the bridal fairs. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, that's, I love that you have had education from the beginning. I was the same way. Like as soon as I realized that there were photographers out there teaching what I needed to know, I was like, why would I not learn from them? Why would I try to figure this out for myself? And so I'm the same way. Like as soon as I dove into photography, I dove into all of it. Uh, I really wasn't. Like, it was very, very frustrating. It was a lot of, um, you know, trying to get my name out there. But honestly, I was not looking. Um, I had maybe one or two. Uh, it, and one of them came from Facebook. One came from Google. It, it was just, it was very frustrating. <laughs> so let's jump into what I really brought you here for and you booked nine sessions from your first ever wedding show. So I'd love to know how that went. Um, that, that was an insane experience because I went, like I said, from <laughs> nothing cricket, mm -hmm. like I'm over here trying mm -hmm. to help people and do a good job and just no interest. Um, 
but the bridal, it wasn't that the email list afterwards. It was all from mm-hmm. the email. If I hadn't done that, yep. maybe one of them might have reached out. But right. um, mm-hmm. so 100% your email strategy is the way to go. <laughs> Um, but Love during that. the show, it, it was, I actually had a really crappy booth, like of all the booths in the like locations, I probably had the second worst, literally. Like I was mm-hmm. at the back by the restaurant on the outside, one of like yeah. three on the outside, like it was not good, but people <laughs> right. still found me and they were wandering mm-hmm. around. I, I brought my sister with me. I can't remember if I heard from you or someone else that it was good to bring somebody. So it's not just you. Mm-hmm. And that was a good move. Uh, yes, <laughs> for sure. So many people. It was astonishing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I yeah. was really, really surprised how complimentary everyone was. Because whether or not they had the budget to book with me, it was like standing there for four hours being told how beautiful my work was. And that was oh, really I fun. love that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I hadn't oh. counted on that. <laughs> <laughs> all the um, words of affirmation for an entire four hours. It, it was nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I also got my elevator pitch down. I, I know exactly what I'm saying now. <laughs> Said it about a million times. Um, and I kind of, it was also really great to just get in front of that many people who were arguably my ideal clients because I could see like real time what they connected with from what I was saying and what they cared about, what they wanted to know. And that was extremely helpful. Um, So there were a few like hidden benefits. Right. It was like four hours of message mining with your ideal client so that you knew exactly from going forward how to market to them. So literally got all of that done in four hours. (laughs) Yeah, it it was really helpful um, for sure. And then um, afterwards, I, I had run a giveaway, like you suggested, and I announced mm-hmm. the winner like the next day on Instagram. And so everyone that entered that giveaway was into the um, basically email sequence. And right. so I got probably not as many responses from that one. But then mm-hmm. once I got the full list for the Pink Bride from the Pink Bride people, I think that was Monday night. They sent it over. The show was Monday. They sent it over Monday night. There were 1,300 email addresses on it. That's and, awesome. <laughs> yeah. And That's so I was awesome. Like, Great. So I imported it yes. to Flowdesk, and then I had mm-hmm. the email sequences set up, ready to go. So I just added them. And I, thank goodness I did it in the morning, man. And then Tuesday, I spent all day with my butt in my chair answering emails. Like, mm-hmm. I couldn't catch up yes. until, like, I don't know. I might have done like eight to eight just answering emails i was supposed to go meet a friend for coffee that's and i awesome. had a and I was like, i'm not coming <laughs> that's awesome it's just not gonna happen <laughs> yeah and so that first day i booked four sessions i believe and then the mm-hmm. rest kind of trickled in as more emails got sent out that's awesome i'm so excited for you and what a huge boost to your email list like immediately it, it was wild and it was um, great <laughs> 1300 emails is amazing because you get those for the rest of your career. You can use them for Black Friday. You can use them for the annual sale. Like it's such a huge boost to your email list. And the fact that you got 1300 is huge because a lot of bridal fairs aren't doing that many anymore. Um, Like the last two that I did, I think I got a total of 500 combined. So that's amazing that you got 1300. Um, the Ooh. other thing that I was going to say <laughs> is with the strategy that I teach in forever yeah. booked out, like it doesn't really matter where your booth is like, yeah, you want traffic and everything, but what is really more important is that email list because you're going to book with the email list. Like it, it sure it's important that you're there, but booking with that email list is the best part and you can use it forever. So that's awesome. Yeah, I'm very excited about the email list. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so how did you feel like as you saw those bookings come in, like that day that you were on the computer from eight to eight, <laughs> how excited were you? <laughs> it it was it was an unreal feeling. Like I have text messages yeah. of me texting my husband and my best friend, just like, I can't believe it. Like I was giving them real time oh. updates. Like I just booked another one and um, oh. like counting how many inquiries there were. Mm-hmm. And I, 
I think in total, I had about 50 people reach out. Now, a lot of them that did end amazing. up ghosting me when I respond, but you know, that happens. <laughs> You booked nine yeah. and you had 50 people reach out. You basically had like a 20% conversion rate. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> okay, good. Cause I, I wasn't sure how that was yeah. as far as the conversion rate, but it, it was, it was a little discouraging that like that many people reached out and I couldn't like convert more of them, but that's good to know that that's a pretty good conversion rate then. Honestly, I bet maybe right now is not the time, but like I said, you have this email list forever. I have booked clients that I got from the email list five, six years ago just start booking like three years later and then they come for multiple sessions so i would mm -hmm. not worry about that at all because you're going to get those clients for life so that's even more that's exciting. exciting yeah yes. and another thing that was really cool when it was happening was that was probably the first time i actually believed that this was possible for me as a career um, just because you know it gets discouraging when you hear nothing but crickets for years in my case, uh, but it, it was very encouraging. <laughs> that is so exciting, kind of got chills there. I can definitely see that too, because I know when I moved to St. Louis, I didn't get, I didn't book any clients for 10 months and then it was just like a snowball after that. So I think you're gonna experience the same thing, like years of crickets and then snowball. So just get ready. <laughs> I hope so. I hope your business is set up to handle the it influx is. of clients. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm working on improving processes now. I think I am going to add mm -hmm. acuity to my website for scheduling just because I sat there all yeah. day for eight hours just emailing. Right. <laughs> well, that, it, exactly. that could become time consuming. Um, but also yeah. I realized that like, one of my strengths is I take care of everything and I make it easy. And what's easier mm -hmm. than just booking your own session, like without even having to talk to me. So. Exactly. And honestly, I think you'll end up getting more bookings that way because you're not like for me, I do better. If you just give me the link, let me figure out the day myself. I'm really busy. Like, let me figure out my day instead of going back and forth. If I have to go yeah. back and forth, you're probably going to lose me. And I think a lot of people are like that now. I mean, I think I probably am. Like, I, I like the idea of just being able to book. I think your con conversion rate will go up even more once you get that implemented. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the next thing that I wanted to talk about is what did you feel helped you have such a successful show? I mean, it basically just goes back to your email strategy. Um, I, I really think that that was the key. Like I, I think, you know, the booth was great, but I've heard you say before, if you could pay the fee and just get the email list, you would. Yes. I, I concur. <laughs> that, that's yes, the best exactly. Part. But the, the other thing is, like, a lot of the, maybe not even all of them, but a fair amount of the women who did book with me, they were like, yeah, we talked at the show. And I was like, great. So I feel like it almost replaced the need for a consultation, which yeah, is for sure. also nice. Helpful. <laughs> less time yeah. consuming <laughs> for sure that's that's yeah. exciting that, that they saw you and actually went ahead and booked too so I mean besides nerves did you feel prepared for the show I know I do a lot of those shows and sometimes I still get nervous I don't get as nervous anymore because it's just like a day of work but that very first few minutes while I'm waiting for people to come to the booth that's when I get nervous so how did you feel? Yeah. Um, I, I was definitely nervous, um, very nervous, but I think I kind of went in with the attitude of if I book at least one session, it's not a waste. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I was right. getting the email list and that was the whole point. So I feel like that mm -hmm. kind of helped with the nerve. Um, yeah. I really think I was about as prepared as I could have been. I had um, ordered cool. several albums and I'd done a few model calls leading up to the session just to get people into my studio because I actually moved also. That was another thing. So a lot of my, not that I had a ton of work, but most of my work had been at the old studio. So I had yeah. about five, five women come in, in all in November mm -hmm. and I photographed them and then made mm -hmm. some albums and that was really helpful. And then I had some like big prints. Yeah. So like you said, I went, awesome. <laughs> I yes. listened to your like, bridal fair section mm -hmm. like three or four times I think just to be sure love it I, was <laughs> <and crossing my teeth. laughs> I love that 
Yep. I feel like that uh, training covers every single thing that you need. So yeah. <laughs> very helpful. It, it was um, at this point priceless. <laughs> so now let's switch gears and talk about another success you had. And that was creating your lead magnet and already booking a session from it. So how long did it take you to actually build the lead magnet? I, I was thinking about that earlier because you sent me the questions mm -hmm. ahead of time and right. it might have taken me a couple days and I, I'm mm -hmm. not very fast at anything I've noticed except editing. I'm pretty fast at editing, <laughs> but um, I'm just like, I get in my head and I think about things. And so I don't have a background mm -hmm. in design. So that was the hardest part. Like I knew what mm -hmm. information I wanted to put on it, um, but I did um, use yours as a little bit of a guide awesome. and then, you know, kind of made mine my own. Um, Right. So maybe a couple days and then um, trying to figure out how to get it like to where the email would send it. That took maybe another day just because I'm not fast. What? <laughs> <laughs> I get it. <laughs> and honestly, setting up the freebie and setting up the whole funnel can take a little bit. What um, yeah. software did you end up using for your marketing, I, your email? Marketing? I ended up going with Flowdesk um, because mm -hmm. that's honestly, because that's what you had recommended. Um, I have yep. a little bit of beef with it over certain things, but on the whole, right. I think it's pretty, good. it's pretty simple. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Yeah. I definitely yeah. agree with that. Yeah. Pretty simple to set up. So how excited were you when you booked that session from the lead magnet after two days of work? <laughs> it sounds weird, but it was almost better than the pink ride because I knew that that was like a longer term strategy and I had seen it work. And the girl that reached out, like she was obviously so excited. She's been thinking about this for months. Like um, it, it was just like such a wholesome email interaction and it didn't take long at all. It was like, I'm ready to book, like do this thing. I'm so excited. I can't wait. And I mean, that's exactly what I want because I'm excited too. I love doing these sessions. So yes, um, I love that. I'm very excited about to work it. with her. And when it's from your email list like that, you know that they're choosing you for your style, for what you offer. Like they've looked at all the options and they've decided you are the one I want to go with. And that's just, it's such a compliment. And I don't take it lightly. We've been talking about it this whole <laughs> podcast. And email marketing is such a great strategy and it's very underutilized. So are you, you've seen the results. So are you going to focus more on it now? That you've seen these results? Yeah. So I had heard about email marketing, you know, since I started the education. And honestly, like I kind of knocked it because I don't feel like it's something that would work on me. Like I'm not really in my emails. I get so many, I just don't even read most of them. So I'm kind of like not sure about it for that reason alone. But I really... I was so intrigued by the way that you've set up your business because I do want to work smarter, not harder. Like I want to spend my time actually like photographing these women and building relationships with them. I don't want to spend my time doing all the admin and the marketing and making reels and being a TikTok star. Like that just sounds exhausting. I would much rather set up a sustainable marketing funnel like you talk about. And you were honestly one of the only educators I've come across that is that intent on like this is how you market for sustainability without burning yourself out without making yourself really hate instagram and all that because i'm just not as comfortable with instagram and social media i've always been more of a private person like i can't tell you the last time i posted on my personal one it's just not something same <laughs> i do but um, i really love the idea of getting to where i could run a sustainable business with an email list yeah, I love that. And I'm the exact same way with my Facebook. Like if you went to that there, I think there was a post in July. <laughs> I think I was tagged in it. It wasn't even something that I posted. So I'm the same way. And that's why the whole time that I was setting up my business, like in 2016, 2017, I was like, I want this to be a long-term strategy. I don't want to have to be hustling 24 seven, like not interested in that at all. It takes a little bit of yeah. setting up, a little bit of time to get it implemented. But once you get it implemented, yeah. your life gets so much better. <laughs> yeah. And I figure right now, like time is a resource I have right now. So I should spend yep. the time to get it set up to, you know, make things easier later. Yep. And, you know, down the road, if me and my husband have children, like I, I would like to be able to still bring in an income in a more part-time capacity. 
So exactly. And honestly, you'll probably mm-hmm. still be bringing in six figures plus and working less and your marketing strategy is just working for you. It's the best. I've already mentioned it a little bit, but you have my signature marketing program forever booked out and fully booked without burnout. What made you decide to take that leap and join? Um, so the reason I finally decided to buy education instead of just, you know, stalking you was, <laughs> was because you were doing a sale and the sale got me. Um, it was a really good sale. And, you know, I knew the education would be worth it. It was more a matter of like, how much money do I have in my bank account right now? And um, budgeting for the transition and all of that. Um, I knew like I would make it back. It was just literally like, uh, do I have the cash flow? Am I ready? Um, and then you had a really good sale. And so I was like, you know, what's, and I think you had mentioned that you gave like full details on the bridal um, fair um, at that webinar when you were running the sale. And I was like, okay, I, I need that. <laughs> so that's kind of what made me uh, take the leap and purchase the education. Yes. Awesome. So would you recommend that everybody else should jump in if they're ready to like really explode their business? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Cause I mean, if I get, I, I can't remember what the math is, but basically like I could make over $10,000 from this one bridal fair if everything goes well and they, you know, buy larger albums or whatever. And I spent what, maybe 400 on your course, like, that you can't beat that ROI. Exactly. That's I like to, and if you set your price list up the way that I'm pretty sure that you did, I like to. Every client is typically worth about two thousand dollars to me. So you book nine clients, you're about eighteen thousand yeah. dollars. So I think you should be. I think you should be fine. I think that was a good investment. <laughs> and I, I knew it would be. It was just, like I said, it was just, you know, the cash flow sometimes holds you back, especially Absolutely. after I had just quit my CPA job and we were kind of trying to save money in case, like, you know, all yeah. that stuff. But, so how excited was your husband when you ended up booking nine sessions in one day? <laughs> <laughs> he was uh, pretty amazed. <laughs> yes, I would say so. Then he thought it was a little bit worth it, right? <laughs> You know, honestly, I, I'm so lucky. I have such a good husband. He's been encouraging me for years. Like he just, I couldn't have done better. I really couldn't have. I love that. That's awesome. Well, anything else you want to add? So when I had scheduled the pink ride, I went ahead and booked it. And then I started, you know, just messaging people, trying to meet up for coffee, trying to get to know um, mm-hmm. specifically wedding vendors, other photographers, whatever. Mm-hmm. And every single person I asked about the pink ride was all, oh, you know, I don't want to put you off of it, but it was useless. Like, it was just really expensive. Nobody wow. booked. Everyone was price shoppers. But I heard nothing good from anyone in the Knoxville That's area. Crazy. I heard I went to three of them, and I booked three people. Like, just, it was so discouraging, honestly. Wow. And, like, everyone was trying yeah. to be nice about it. But I did not hear anything good from anyone about that up until, you know, your education. Like, you were really one of the few people who's like, bridal fairs, bridal fairs, that's where you yes. go. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I figure it's just because they didn't have your strategy. But I did think that that was really interesting, just how much mm-hmm. um, negativity about it I heard going into it. So I just really didn't know what to expect. That's crazy. Well, I'm glad you were already yeah. committed to it at that point, right? So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I had already booked it. Like, I wasn't going to not book it because – really because I didn't know what else to do at this point. I was like, I got to do something. So, um, but it was really good to have your strategy. Yes. I love that. That makes me so happy. Well, this has been awesome. I'm so glad that you were, you had time to come on. It's been awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me. This has been so exciting. I've told all my friends. (laughs) Love it. Of course. And thank you for taking the time to come on. So I hope you enjoyed this interview with Kelsey of Rosewood Boudoir. She has been awesome. I'm so thankful she took the time to come on the podcast, meet with us, talk about these huge wins. And if you are interested in booking out your schedule forever, like Kelsey just did, I want to invite you to 
join my program forever booked out. It happens to be on sale. Like she talked about, she got, she caught it on sale. I'm giving you guys the opportunity to catch it on sale as well. Make sure you check it out in the description below. I will link it there. The cool thing about this program is it is completely DIY. You can do this on your own time when you have time. This program gives you long-term strategies, short-term strategies. It gives you everything you need to book out your schedule for the so I truly hope that you take the time to go ahead, check it out and join because I know that you want to be forever booked out or you would not be listening to this podcast. So go check it out and I'm excited to see you inside. Thank you for listening to this episode of Sustainable Freedom with Boudoir Photography. Please be sure to rate and follow so that you never miss an episode. They drop every Thursday and they're always full of super actionable information for you to apply right now in your boudoir business. Until then, make your next shoot your best shoot.